Plans in Destiny 2. Are you in one? Have you enjoyed the experience? Let's talk about it. Welcome Guardians to another Embrace Destiny video, Kaz PhD here, thanks for stopping by. Today we continue our series on improving Destiny's immersion, this time focusing on clans and improving how they support players. With the majority of activities in Destiny 2 going free to play with new light in September, and many new little lights expected to enter our universe, now is a good time to look at how clans work and raise questions as to whether they are in need of adjustment or improvement. To review, clans in Destiny 2 are a way of incentivizing players to play together. Being in a clan adds your clan tag to any emblem you have and provides weekly bounties and rewards from Hawthorne. If your clan plays enough and levels up, you get seasonal perks culminating in a special clan banner staff unlocked at the end of each season. True to form, a lot of clan support and management is done out of game. The Destiny 2 app, as well as the Discord bot Charlemagne, are tools the community have used and developed to manage, communicate with, organize, and track clan activities and accomplishments. Aside from seeing clan members online, seeing what Hawthorne activities your clan has done, and communicating with them via PC-based clan chat, there are no other means of clan management or support in-game. Clans, though largely ignored by solo players, and barely incentivized in the game itself, are very important in Destiny. While it is not necessary to be in a clan, endgame activities such as raids, the menagerie, reckoning, and more team-focused activities such as competitive crucible and gambit prime are a lot more approachable if you are in a clan of reliably available and communicative players. Without a clan, players must either rely on the uncoordinated efforts of Blueberry Guardians, or seek out-of-game options such as LFG, Reddit, or Discord. These are all excellent tools, but a strong theme of this video series is that a lack of in-game options is a real barrier to players. Sure, anyone could just Google or search online for ways to find fire teams, or just randomly message people on their console of choice, but the abstraction, the need to leave the game to find better ways to play the game, lowers player engagement. The point of this video series, remember, is to be aware of those new players coming in and find ways to keep them playing, as well as improving current Guardian experience. The more players playing this game, the better, as it will improve matchmaking activities, grow the community, and allow Bungie to have more guts and opportunities to push the franchise even further. So let's look at ways to improve clans and the clan experience. First, the clan banner. My friends and I at the beginning of Destiny 2 were excited about the ability to design something that could be shown and seen in-game. Then, cue my disappointment when the only times you see someone's clan banner is if you inspect them or join their guided game. Such a fantastic feature to be buried and mostly forgotten is a waste. If the banner were a supremely custom design, such as through a JPEG uploaded to Bungie's website, I could understand. But the banner is designed via assets Bungie chose, meaning that there is likely more ability to use those assets more in-game. Two suggestions I've seen on Reddit countless times involve the ability to proudly fly your banner on a public event flag you've rallied to, and on raid banners used in in-game activities. The first suggestion especially would be useful, as it not only allows players to see their clan flag in the wild, but allows players outside of the clan to see it and that could be just enough to get them interested in joining. We could go one step further by having an option on the rally flag to inspect the clan whose banner is flying, the first clan to rally the public event in that instance. Next, there really should be an option to decorate our ships and class items with our clan banner. I can understand the difficulty in applying this universally, such as through a shader, but the fact that it's not even an option for a single item in the game seems odd. Let's come back to this, as I believe these could be rewards given from an improved guided game system. Do you remember guided games? Have you ever used it? Guided games is the Destiny 2 feature which allows you to seek out or guide guardians through nightfalls and raids. While basically a matchmaking system, guided games was originally intended as a means of growing clans, and is focused on forming connections rather than speedrunning events. Pro tip, by the way, for those of you seeking Nightfall exclusive rewards, check out what the Guided Games option is for that week. It's usually a different strike than the three currently in rotation, and it does drop loot. I got my Militia's Birthright in Guided Games when Lake of Shadows was not on the official rotation. Anyway, Guided Games isn't a strongly used feature in Destiny 2. 
The three main problems with guided games are, in order, it takes way too long to find an activity, you're stuck on the matchmaking screen the entire time the game is searching, and the rewards are very lackluster, amounting to a few emblems. The second problem, having to sit in the matchmaking screen, may be unavoidable. It may be too much for Bungie's engine and lack of dedicated servers to have a player queued into an activity, but letting them run wild in another. Personally, if it were possible, I would push Bungie to consider making this happen. Imagine running patrols while you search for a group to raid with, getting a notification when the matchmaking is complete or the group is ready to start. This fix, again, may be impossible to implement, but if made, would seriously increase the usage of guided games, because as of right now, you sometimes have to wait 30 to 45 minutes to find a group. Next, the first problem, how long matchmaking takes. That may be solved by the above, and it may come down to population and incentivization. If there are more players using guided games, it won't take as long, and if guided games gives you more reasons to use it, more people would. So, how could guided games incentivize us to use it more? Well, by giving us rewards, of course. Triumphs, more emblems, maybe a title seal? These would be an early start. What about gear? What about pinnacle gear for being active guides? Perhaps you could earn ornaments for displaying your clan banner on your ship or class item as rewards for running guided games. Maybe there could be added mods or perks relevant to your activity. Maybe Nightfall guided games perks could reward an extra score bump or give you and your team more health or damage. Maybe enough of a guided game score could enable an extra raid banner placement in a Nightfall. For raids, consider, consider continuing the thinking that went into raid mods perks relevant to the activities and enemies in the raid, but focused on team building and support. Zavala said it himself, players go where the weapons are, and not just weapons. If there is gear to chase, we'll chase it. And this could grow the population of guided games, making it a more reliable and enjoyable experience. Improving guided games will improve clan support and experience by one, giving another means of clan recruitment, and two, incentivizing people to want to play in clans and chase new gear. This next part of the video will be a bit controversial. I have an idea which could really add to clan support, but would require a lot of time, effort, and resources. An idea which would both encourage players to join clans and give clan members reasons to keep playing and contributing. You ready for it? Bungie could consider creating a clan hall. Let's look at the Season of Opulence's most interesting addition to the game, the Tribute Hall. If you haven't been, the Tribute Hall is a social space, accessible to a fire team of three, given to us by Callus, the Cabal Emperor. Here, as you level up your hall, as you earn tributes, you not only are able to adorn the area with statues celebrating your achievements, but you're also able to summon enemy forces, ammo, connect to your vault, and access the light via a shard of the Traveler. The Tribute Hall is an amazing addition to the game, and honestly more than I expected from Bungie. Here's a space that works for the entire spectrum of player. Are you a no-lifer who has thousands of materials? Great! Buy those tributes fast and show off! Are you a casual who doesn't have a lot of time to play? That's okay. Do those bounties and you'll get everything eventually. Now trophies are cool, but the fact that Bungie snuck in a gun range, something that has been requested almost every week on Destiny's subreddit since the game launched, a place where you can have a controlled environment to check weapon and gear perks, that's fantastic! Now imagine this tribute hall, but for clans. A social space, accessible by more than three players, a place to earn and show off clan achievements, would be a neat in-game way of encouraging and rewarding cooperation. There could be special quests or special trophies, leaderboards, or items to be displayed for completing certain triumphs as a clan. Heck, add clan triumphs in general! We could even envision Eververse getting involved. If there were clan hall decorations that you could buy with both bright dust or silver, it could be an easy way for Bungie to earn back money and keep players playing. While microtransactions are generally frowned upon, when done right, they not only provide extra options for players, and not only give players a way to earn them rather than spending real money on them, microtransactions help Bungie with the only two currencies which actually matter to them, currencies which they can use to keep building on this game. Your money and your time. We could go one step further, but it gets trickier. See, I envision a clan hall could also be a recruitment tool. By having a decorated clan hall showing off your clan's accomplishments, you demonstrate to new players your clan's proficiency and focus. 
If your hall is full of PvP tributes, but few PvE ones, then players know what kind of activities that clan's players focus on. Depending on the range of customization of the hall, it could also give some sense of the clan's personality. Similar to the clan motto, this could help new players get a sense of the community they may be joining. The tricky part here would be where to put it. In order to be a recruitment tool, it should, not, it should be accessible not just when you're inspecting a player. That's a step most players won't take. If a player has to inspect a character or a rally flag and then load into a separate instance to see the hall, few will do that. Now, every solution here comes with drawbacks, most of which I'm unequipped to solve, as I don't work at Bungie nor have the programming experience. My suggestion would be to have a clan quarter in the tower. Similar to the Annex or Bazaar, it would be a separate instance which populates with clan halls depending on the players who enter the tower. Imagine strolling down a section of the tower with clan halls every so often that you could physically actually wander into. Put some vendors down there, offer some other kinds of incentives for hanging out, such as mini-games, I don't know, arm wrestling emotes, or something like American Gladiator, or a jukebox, and the fun can continue. You could even expand guided games here. By providing either little areas where guardians could meet and signal that they are looking to raid or nightfall or whatever, or by having some kind of interface where symbols appear above guardians' heads, solo players could instantly join a group looking to do their activity of choice. Think of it like a busy marketplace where there's always something going on and people to see and interact with. A solo player looking to join a clan can wander down to this quarter, browse the clan halls, and when inspecting the hall could get more information on the clan, their accomplishments, and which players in the tower are part of that clan. If you find a hall you like, inspect it, message a member of the clan, boom, you're in the clan. As I said before, I know that these ideas are a little outlandish. They would require a lot of work, and judging by some recent comments from the developers of Destiny 2 about the limitations of this game, the clan hall idea might be outside the scope of this game. However, I think it is important to continue thinking about such things, and keeping the conversation going with Bungie. During their Shadowkeep Vidoc, they said that the only two communities to guide this game going forward are Bungie and us. By exploring and communicating these ideas, we can help grow the game even more. Clans are an important part of this game. With so little in-game guidance and Bungie leaning ever more on tough end-game activities, clans offer a means to connect players to a greater community, allowing them to overcome that solo feeling of being lost, frustrated, or isolated. Bungie is making a big move with New Light by allowing players an opportunity to experience the universe of Destiny. But to keep players invested, to transition them from free-to-play to paying customers, Bungie needs to provide a better framework for clans, to allow new players to join groups and help them through some of Bungie's greatest and most challenging activities. In the meantime, if you're looking to join a clan, I recommend the Fireteam subreddit, the Destiny 2 app's Fireteam feature, Discord for PC, and Xbox's LFG, all of which I hear are very useful. You could also try the website, app, uh, Discord called the100.io, which will allow you to search for people with similar goals and play styles as yourself. What do you think of my ideas? Do you think Bungie should improve guided games, clan rewards, and or consider ideas such as the clan hall? Do you have related suggestions of your own? As always, feel free to provide feedback in the comments below, and consider checking out my Discord to keep the conversation going. Link down below. In the meantime, I've been having a lot of fun helping Guardians get Thorn, Outbreak Perfected, and other weapons via completing the final respective quest steps. I'm looking forward to the Solstice of Heroes and what's coming further. If you need help with those uh, PvE quest steps on Xbox, or you just want to come hang out while we help others, feel free to check out my Twitch, link down below, usually online between after 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern. That's what we've been seeing here in the background, and it's been a lot of fun. Anyway, that's it for the video today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Guardians. Okay, we're going to the end of this corridor, and I'm going to turn right. I'm going to circle a hole in the center, and be bright red, and then drop down there. Looks like meat's back on the main. I get it? Oh, I missed it. Okay. Over this section, try to use the tank itself to block the uh, 
turret. Swift is up, what down? So, uh, servitors are both down. Nice. Okay. Left tank is up. Almost dead. I got Cass. You're insane. <laughs> uh, we only have, uh... Yeah, yeah. Please do if you can. No worries, no worries. Oh, 24. Let's get this walker down. Oh, I forgot the walker is still up. My bad. <laughs> yeah, Red Seal, I love the Hail Mary throws. When they work, obviously. But you gotta try them, right? Nice work, Cliff. Okay, it's dead. Shoulder charge. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There, yeah, there's some invisible marauders in the middle. Yeah. 49 seconds. Okay, shoulder charge on the big guy coming up. It's not right. bad. Now. Seconds. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 wow. Oh. <laughs>